Hello everyone, welcome back. This is electric charge and electric field part 2. So in our previous class, I've explained what an electric charge means. So the experiment, the simple experiment to demonstrate an electric charge. We also look into electrons, the features of electrons, the conductor, the insulators, what an insulator means, what a conductor means. So uh, I explained that opposite charge attract one another because of the electric force. And this phenomenon is outlined in Coulomb's law. So what is Coulomb's law? Coulomb's law states that the electric force exerted by a charge Q1 on a second charge Q2 is from the vector analysis, we have F1 of 2 is equal to Ke multiplied by Q1 multiplied by Q2 divided by R squared. Where R is the distance between the two, between the two charges. And R vector is a unit vector directed from Q1 toward Q2. So the constant Q Ke, which is called the Coulomb constant, has the value Ke is equal to 8.9 multiplied by 8.99 times 10 raised to the power 9 Newton meter squared per Coulomb squared. So now we've um, seen what the the Coulomb's law state does. That is, the magnitude of electric force between two objects is equal to the Coulomb constant multiplied by the charge on the first object times the charge on the second object divided by the square of the distance between them. So that's explanation on Coulomb's law. So remarkably, if you look at Coulomb's law, we realize it is essentially identical to Newton's law of universal gravitation, which is F is equal to G M1 multiplied by M2 divided by their dist the square of their distance. So the only difference is that the electric force can be attractive or repulsive. So when we're talking about the difference between the L um, the Coulomb's law and Newton's law of universal gravitation, we realize that the electric force can be either attractive or repulsive. So what we mean by this depends on the size of its terms and the result, resulting sign on the force. That is, our G can be either positive or negative. So that's what we refer to as repulsive and attract, attractive. So now, also, gravity is always attractive. That is, gravitational force must be plus always. It must be attractive. Which we, What we mean by this one is M in universal gravitation law will always be positive. So also, it is interesting to note that Coulomb's constant, which is 8.99 multiplied by 10 raised to the power 9, it is almost a trillion times larger than the gravitational constant, which is 6.67 times 10 raised to the power minus 11. So looking at all these facts, looking at all these facts, we realize that Coulomb's law, Coulomb's law also tells us the electric force between two objects increases as charge Q increases and decreases as distance increases. So if more than two charges are present, so we, we the, the vector addition must be done to find out the net force upon any particle in the system. So now the gravitational field is what allows the gravitational force to propagate. So in a simple term, gravitational force arises from a gravitational field. Also in the case of electric field, so electric field 
allows the electric force to propagate. So in a simple form, the electric force arises from electric field. So they work pari parso. So the electric force is much stronger than the gravitational force. So what are the evidence of this? So we realize that the electric force keeps you from falling to the center of the of the heart. Also, a tiny magnet beats the gravity of the whole planet. So what does this thing mean? That is the repulsion between particles in your feet and particles in the ground is more than strong enough to keep you from falling to the center of the heart. Also, by placing a cheap refrigerator magnet to keep a piece of paper on the fridge against the gravitational pull of the entire planet. So, any charged object will manifest electric field around itself. So, what we're saying is, the effect of electric field is so fed on every charged object around us. So, now, let's look into strength of electric field. For the electric field strength, or the strength of electric field, is given to be E is equal to Kc multiplied by Q all over R squared. So what does this um, mathematical expression mean? Is the electric field strength E is equal to the Coulomb's constant. So multiplied by charge on the object and divided by the square of distance from objects generating the field to some other object. So now we've seen what the strength of electric field is. So we can ask to calculate the electric field strength. So now let's move on to electric field line. So electric field lines describe an electric field in any region of space. The number of lines per unit area through a surface perpendicular to the line is proportional to the magnet of E in that region. So looking at the diagram we have, we have A and B. So the electric field lines for a point charge, that is the A. For a positive charge, the lines are directed radially outward. So for us to identify a positive electric charge lines, so the line will be drawn from inward and it will it will be directed radially outward. So the arrow will be pointing outside. So for the positive electric field lines. And for a ne negative point charge. So what we're going to have. That the point or the lines will be directed radially inward. So the arrow will be facing inward. For a ne negative charge field line. So um, the summary of all what we've been taught in this part. So we we explained the Coulomb's law. We said the similarities and differences between the Coulomb's law and Newton's universal gravitational law. We look at electric field strength. We're given the formula. Look at electric field lines and we explain everything. So now I want us to look at this exercise. So let's try to calculate the magnitude of the electric force between two protons, which is six meters apart. So this thing is simple. So what we're just going to do is we apply the formula. So once we apply the formula, we have the Coulomb's constant. We have the Q1, Q2, but we're not giving here, divided by the half square. So let's try to work on this and explain the similarities and differences between the new things law of universal gravitation and Coulomb's law so thank you for watching and don't forget to like and share this video goodbye